Welcome to another episode of ATM 8, all the mods 8, and we're checking our three times compressed nether star blocks. We need 15 of them and we have 14. That's pretty hype. We just need one more nether star block, two times compressed, and we got it. So we'll probably come back around here by the end of the episode and hopefully we'll have all 15 that we can put inside of our star. So I have been doing some off-camera work here and i've had this system set up before not all of it there's some new things that i've added but i have some crafters back here and that way when i'm doing mechanism stuff i can just hop in here and say i need a reinforced alloy i can just hit that be like hey i need 10 of these and then hit start i don't need them right now so i'm not going to do it right now but yeah, so I've set up a lot of auto crafting over here. The one with the redstone in here uh, to make like in infused alloys and whatnot. The refined obsidian dust is used to make the atomic alloy and the diamonds or enriched diamonds is used to make the reinforced alloy and the refined obsidian dust that'll go into the one that requires the atomic alloy so we got that going and we also have one more auto crafting with the block of coal and we use that for enriched iron for, because you'll need enriched iron for other things that you need to craft in today's episode we are going to be diving into making a fission reactor and that is this guy right here and to get started, we need 53 fission reactor casings and 41 reactor glass. Now that's only to make the bare minimum, which is a five by five by five, but it can go, the maximum size is 18 by 18 by 18, which is crazy big. I have another friend who is doing content on all the mods eight. I'll leave his channel in the description below, but he made this and he made it a nine by nine by nine, and I'm going to one up him and making a 11 by 11 by 11. It's a lot of numbers. And on top of making this fusion reactor, we need to make the inside of the reactor fuel control, which is two fission fuel assemblies and a control rod assembly. And as you can see here, it goes like in the center of the, uh, fission reactor on top of that we're going to be needing four fission reactor ports which you need one for coolant coolant input and output fissile fuel input and waste output and we need this waste for something in the all the mod star and i'll show you that right now and it goes into making this operable probability device so we need the solar recharging units for this and we need two of them and in order to make those we need polonium pellets now the only way to make polonium pellets is by putting water and polonium into a pressurized reaction chamber which i do have behind me right now and i'll show you that in a minute but how do we get polonium? Well, you get polonium by putting it into a solar neutron activator, which I actually already have made, and it converts the nuclear waste that we get from the fission reactor into the polonium that we need to make that item. Uh, if you guys are curious, this is how you make the solar neutron activator. Like I said, I already have it made, so I think we're good. Uh, I will dive into how I made some of the stuff here. So there's the HDPE sheet, which you need the HDPE pellets. In order to get the HDPE pellets, you need another uh, pressurized reaction chamber of liquid ethylene and oxygen. And in order to get liquid ethylene, you need to put it into this condensatrating, and let me know if I'm pronouncing this right or wrong, uh, but it turns ethylene into liquid ethylene. And I'll show you how I got ethylene. So I have this whole setup over here. Here's the liquid ethylene coming out of here, going into there. So these are making the uh, HDPE pellets uh, that you need to make the HDPE sheets. So what you're gonna need in order to make the HDPE pellets, 
uh, you need ethylene, which in order to get ethylene, you need biofuel, which I have uh, watermelons going into this crusher and it's pushing out biofuel. And then I have that pushing it into this pressurized reaction chamber. See the biofuel is in here. And then it should, I think because it's full, it's not right now. There it goes. And it's making this substrate. So you can use that substrate and put it with this liquid ethylene and oxygen and make the HTPE pellets. So the ethylene that you're getting from the water and hydrogen, and I'll, the hydrogen comes from the electric separator, the electrolytic separate. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. And the hydrogen is coming from this guy. So you put water in here, you get, you put it in the uh, electrolytic separator and it gives you hydrogen and oxygen. So I have the hydrogen pushing into here. So now I have water and hydrogen to make this ethylene but you also need the biofuel in here. So don't forget about that. And then I have the oxygen coming from the electrolytic separator from here into this pressurized reaction chamber uh, over here. So I have the liquid ethylene and I have the oxygen going into here, making the, those HDPE pellets. So then once you got the HDPE pellets, you can make the HDPE sheet here just by putting the pellets around almost like you're making a furnace and then that's pretty much basic stuff from there the reinforced alloy i just told you how you can make that and the elite control circuit is just made with an advanced control circuit and two reinforced alloys to make an advanced control circuit you just need two infused alloys with a basic control circuit so you need redstone in this slot right here this extra slot so it fills up with redstone and then you put iron in here for the infused alloy and then you need the osmium to make the basic control circuit. I know it's kind of a lot and hopefully you guys understand but if you do not please feel free to ask me questions in the comments below I'd be happy to answer them. So that was pretty much what I was doing in between episodes just getting all the crafting recipes going and whatnot for this because the mechanism is a big mod to go over. So I'm trying not to make super long videos and I'm trying to just go over one topic at a time so that it's easy to understand for you guys. So back to the fission reactor, we also need a reactor fail safe. So uh, I guess what this is all about is uh, it's so it can prevent such a catastrophic disaster by creating a redstone circuit breaker using fission reactor logic adapters uh, now these aren't 100% guaranteed to stop an explosion but they are absolutely nice to have so I guess I'm not that worried about it my buddy crypto cow did the same thing here and he went ahead and did it just for just to be safe but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make two of these Fission reactor logic adapters so that we can have our failsafe. So now we have everything we need for our failsafe. And also, I went ahead and already made all of the fission fuel assemblies, the control rod assemblies. Um, oh, I already had two logic adapters. Oh, well. Uh, and then I already have the fission reactor ports. And I also have all the fission reactor casings that I need as well. Now, the last thing that remains is the, the reactor glass, which I also made a bunch of. Now, I don't think we're going to be using all of this, but it's safer to have more than less so that we don't have to keep making trips back and forth because of the place that I am actually doing lag spike. The place that I'm actually doing this in is ever bright you want it to be daytime because you have this solar neutron activator here and it's solar for a reason guys <laughs> so like i said we're gonna go ahead get into building this thing uh we need all of these and we need the so we need the fusion reactor casings and we need the reactor glass so i'm gonna go ahead and just make an 11 by 11 by 11 it is really bright in here. So there it is, the outer frame is done. Now we're gonna fill in the rest with the reactor glass. And you know what, we're gonna do this. 
just like that. Oh, wow, that makes it so much easier. And there it is in all of its glory. Uh, the connecting textures isn't uh, doing a good job of that, but uh, we can fix that real quick. Hold on. And boom, it's fixed. It's nice and clear now. It looks amazing. Okay, so our next move is, is probably to do the in interior so the reason i made so many of these fission uh fuel assemblies is because you can actually put multiples of these in here uh along with the control rod assemblies as well so i made a whole bunch of them just so that uh it could work at full capacity now the one that they display only has one inside of it but you could put one in the corner there and another one, and another one, and another one. As long as they're not touching, that's all that matters. So we're gonna look for the dead center, place our fission fuel assemblies, going all the way up to the top except for one block, because the block that goes on top is the control rod assembly. Look at that, it connects beautifully. So we're gonna do that all on the inside so that it can work at full capacity. All right, so once you finally put it in that little checker pattern there and it's all good, we're gonna move on to the next thing, which is we're gonna be putting in our fission reactor ports, just like so. And then we're also gonna go ahead and take care of our fail save. And we're gonna put it on the side here. So now it is fully interactable, so we can right click on this guy and it'll tell us what we need to input and output into our fission reactor here. So we're gonna need coolant, meaning we're gonna need water. And we can do that simply with just a sink. This thing will give you infinite water, infinite. And the water is filling up. We might put a pipe upgrade in this so that it'll go a little faster. Just a little, little bit of that. And it is definitely going faster. That's gonna hold a lot. Oh man. It's because it's an 11 by 11 by 11. It's a big boy. All right, so the next thing. So in order for the fission reactor to run, we need fissile fuel. And in order to make fissile fuel, we need to follow these steps here going along until we make this uranium hexafluoride. And we need the sulfuric acid, which the first thing we'll need is sulfur dust. Now, to get sulfur dust, I believe the way I'm going to do it is using another pressurized reaction chamber, putting in water and oxygen into this guy with a block of coal, and it'll make some sulfur dust and hydrogen on the side. So I'm gonna set my electrolytic separator here to output two cyan to the top, which the two is on the right side, oxygen. So I'm gonna put this on top. Oh no, that wasn't supposed to happen. So make sure when you do do this, you do the side config here and you do gases set output to. Uh, you don't want the item config to be set to output to. You want the gases. For some reason, I didn't do that. So I put my coal in and I have my water. Uh, I put a pipe in the back of it and now it's uh, it's making the sulfur. Might need to put some speed upgrades on this. It's taking a hot minute, but we get nine right off the bat. So that's a plus. All right, so the next thing on the list is to get a chemical oxidizer. I'm gonna be feeding the sulfur dust that I get from here into this like so, and it gets sulfur dioxide. So since this is also making hydrogen, I also put the pressurized tubes and I fed it back into the pipe where it is feeding this oxygen. Then there's two sources of oxygen being fed. Uh, hydrogen, not oxygen. Two sources of hydrogen being fed into this guy here. Now the next thing on the to-do list is to get a chemical infuser. Pretty simple to make. Make this guy. And I'm gonna put this right next to, I'm shrunk right next to this guy here, like that. Um, and see the sulfur dioxide is going in. Now we need to combine this with oxygen to get sulfur trioxide. 
So what I'm going to do is instead of trying to feed the oxygen from this guy is I'm going to make a second electrolytic separator, put it on top and hopefully it'll feed through the top. If not, I'll have to put it on one of the sides. There we go. So we got our oxygen going in, making our sulfur trioxide. There is a quite a bit going on here, isn't there? <laughs> so I made this rot rotary condensation trader and I already made one before, but this one is for making water vapor. So you want to hit toggle operation, make sure you're feeding water into it and it'll make water vapor. And the reason I'm doing this is because you need to combine it with sulfur trioxide and you will get your sulfuric acid. So I made this basic chemical tank uh, feeding the water vapor into it so that I can bring it over here and um, combine it with the sulfur trioxide and make that sulfuric acid so I can get closer to that fissile fuel. And this isn't going to be a permanent fix. Uh, eventually I'm going to change it up so that it'll be easier. It'll just be constantly feeding in there and or uh, feeding into something else so that it'll make that sulfuric acid. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and stop it right there because I'm getting a little impatient. I sped that up for you, so I hope you liked it. So now this should start be making sulfuric acid. Uh, I need to feed power into this thing. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, there we go. Yes, it's making the sulfuric acid. Yay. So now the next thing to do is turn the uranium ingots into yellow cake uranium. And we do that by putting it into an enrichment chamber. So we'll take our uranium, put in here into the enrichment chamber. We should get yellow cake uranium. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this up to auto craft. So that way we won't have to worry about it. So now we have it set up to make a stack of uranium cake. Oh yeah. Next thing that makes noise gets muffled. All right. At least the noise has been reduced. <laughs> I was, I was getting a little tired of all the noise. All right. So we're going to use the chemical oxidizer to put the yellow cake uranium inside to make uranium oxide. And we're going to take this uranium oxide and put it into a tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch more and we're going to output it to the top. All right. So now I have it auto putting it in here, auto ejecting it into here. So this will fill up and then go immediately into the chemical tank. All right. So the next thing we're going to be making is the chemical dissolution chamber. All right. And then we're going to go ahead and set this guy to take the gas and output to the top. So we have the sulfuric acid. And then on top of that, we need fluorite. So we take our fluorite, which you can get from mining, pop it in there and we'll get our hydrofluoric acid. I'm going to make a tank for that as well. Plop that in there. Uh, this needs power and now it's making hydrofluoric acid. Now we're at that. We're going to need another chemical infuser and we're going to go ahead and put that in the crafting recipe just for easy access and we should be able to craft it. And there it is. And then we're going to want to take our uranium oxide and feed it to the other side of this chemical infuser and we will get something magnificent. I tell you, magnificent. All right, so we're gonna output the front. Auto eject is on. We wanna make sure that we're doing this for gases, I guess, or maybe infused types. Oh, didn't mean to do that. And there it is, our uranium hexafluoride get another tank for this now just to start off i'm just doing this i'm gonna show you guys maybe in the next episode how i'm plan on uh changing this up for the long haul uh i want this to be uh fully automated and i don't want to have to ever want to come back here and mess with anything ever again so just for the time being it's it's just a temporary setup for now in the next episode, I'll have it all changed up and uh, fully operational, um, automated, and 
we won't have to come back here and deal with any of this. So now we're going to make our isotop isotopic centrifuge so that we can get our fissile fuel. And we're getting our fissile fuel. We have our uranium hexafluoride going into our isotopic centrifuge. And I hope you guys could follow along because this is a lot. This is a lot. I added so much here. But like I said, I'm going to reorganize this in between episodes and uh, that way it could all produce a lot smoother and more automatic. All right, guys. So I gathered up the little bit of fissile fuel that I have and clearly it is not enough. I made a big old tank, so I'm going to have to make a lot of fissile fuel. So I am actually not going to do it in between episodes and I'm going to go organize that stuff right now and I'll get back to you guys once I'm done. All right, guys. So I went ahead and activated it, set up everything that I needed to set up and I'll explain to you how I did that. So here's the new setup. I set it up over here next to this thing, which is really loud. Like it's, it's kind of loud. Um, I don't know if there's a way to muffle this. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you can, but I, I'm actually not too sure, but it's loud. So yeah, here's the setup. I explained how all this works, but I'll show you the layout that I did to make it all connect properly. And it's not completely using mechanism because I'm also integrating my refined storage into this as well. Um, so I have a sink down here feeding water into the electrolytic separator here. And then feeding the oxygen from the electrolytic separator into this guy. Also feeding water into this pressurized reaction chamber. Putting in the coal, making the sulfur dust, in turn making the sulfur dioxide and turn and putting the sulfur dust in here to make that and right here i have the oxygen from the electrolytic separator going up as well into this guy and then we have the sulfur dioxide the sulfur dioxide coming from over here into this guy making the sulfur trioxide and then pushing the sulfur trioxide into this chemical infuser uh, making the sulfuric acid and then we also have the water vapor coming from this guy uh, feeding water from the sink into this guy to make the water vapor and that gets us the sulfuric acid and then we're putting the sulfuric acid in here with some fluoride to make this hydrofluoric acid and then converting that over here with the hydrofluoric acid and the uranium oxide to get the uranium hexafluoride and i just have constant yellow cake uranium going into this chemical oxidizer here um making that uranium oxide and in turn feeding it into here feeding that uranium hexafluoride into this isotopic centrifuge making us some fissile fuel so i also made a quantum entangle porter here and I put it over here so I don't have a whole cable going all the way over here into this. But you can see we got plenty of fissile fuel to fuel this bad boy. Another thing you need to do is uh, output the coolant because it'll heat up. Problem here is that you're going to need a lot of waste barrels. Although I have no idea. Maybe I can use an Integra porter to transfer that. So I actually have been kindly pointed out that I, I, I did a little, little thing wrong. Oh, what? So in the quest with the radioactive waste barrels, it said heated coolant and nuclear waste. So I was thinking that the coolant, heated coolant needs to go into the radioactive waste barrel. And I was wrong. We go over here and it says here, an industrial turbine is massive multi-block structure used to convert heated coolant into power. So. We're going to do that in the next episode, so just keep that in mind. I I, I, I gave you guys bad information. <laughs> so make sure you have this set to output waste. Uh, so then you want to put the pressurized tubes going into the solar uh, neutron activator here. And uh, it'll turn the nuclear waste into polonium. And then uh, uh, you put water into this pressurized reaction chamber and then polonium from the solar neutron activator 
and uh, you put some fluorite dust in there and you do that by taking fluorite put it in a crusher you have fluorite dust and I have that inputting into here getting us polonium pellets then we'll be able to make this guy um, and I believe we need two of them yeah we need two of them to make this improbable probability device all right we're gonna take three of these polonium pellets we can take this and auto craft it I put it in my crafter solar panels we need solar panels put that in the crafter like that now I should be able to pull it off all right it's done and we got it all right guys I'm gonna have to end the episode here. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully you learned something. And if you did and you do like the content that I am making, be sure to check out my previous episode. It is on the left hand side and on the right hand side, you can be free by subscribing to me. Yes, thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next one. Ooh, another star blocks are done. I said I'll get around to it by the end of the episode.